Space weather forecast. Solar storm is predicted to strike Earth next week and could cause some problems. Chaos is one word used. Space weather forecast. The hole has opened up on the surface of the sun and it will shoot an array of solar particles straight towards us, towards our Earth, that is. Scientists have warned us. is by Sean Martin on Express UK and also on spaceweather.com. Earth's orbit around the sun will align with a coronal hole, the hole in the sun's upper atmosphere, and solar particles will therefore bombard our planet after they've made their way through space. Experts predict that the solar storm will hit Earth July 31st or August 1st, and people in the northern hemisphere are likely to be treated to northern lights, or aurora borealis as they're called, as the solar winds bombard the upper reaches of our planet. The auroras, which also include southern lights, aurora australis, are caused when solar particles hit the atmosphere, and as the magnetosphere gets bombarded by solar winds, the stunning blue lights can appear as that of a layer of atmospheric atmosphere deflects the particles. It's not just blue lights. I have been lucky enough to see them when I was about 12 years old. One winter night, Friday, I remember it was, in Canada. I used to live in Montreal. I'm also Canadian, thus the accent. But, <laughs> but I was lucky enough to see very late at night as we were returning home from a friend's house, uh, the aurora borealis, the northern lights above our heads, and they were quite low. They looked as if they were quite low. Actually, it looks like a curtain of uh, the colors of a rainbow. It's not green or blue lights. It's all the color lights. And it's totally silent. It's like a, a wavering, silky, colorful curtain above your head. Amazing uh, thing to see. Totally noiseless. That's what it is. Anyway, um, we may be seeing this again. And now this beautiful atmospheric optic, the uh, expert Les Cowley analyzed this flash of found elements mixed blue with unusual green. This is a rare cloud top flash, they say. It turns out blue flashes are a thing. They're formed in the same way as green flashes. A mirage magnifies tiny differences in the atmospheric refraction of the red, green, and blue light. And blue flashes are generally harder to see than the green flashes because blue is strongly scattered by intervening air and small dust particles. Now, when Peck was uh, watching the sunset July 25th, the conditions favored both colors. The clouds in Peck's photo were trapped in a marine temperature inversion layer. Strong temperature gradients produced a strong mirage with well-separated colors. This is what Cowley explains. And a very clean atmosphere allowed the blue to pass unscattered. Now, according to space weather, our solar wind speed is at 103.7 kilometers per second density of 1.9 protons per square centimeter. The X-ray solar flares, 6 hours max A7 and 24 hours A7, July 27th. The solar minimum is here, they say, but even now strangely beautiful auroras are dancing around the poles deep inside the Arctic Circle. The expert guides of uh, some holidays you can watch, book, and watch them together. Now, the next solar wind stream, a hole in the sun's atmosphere turning towards Earth, spewing a stream of solar wind in our direction. Estimated time of arrival, July 31st, August 1st. High altitude, high latitude sky watchers should be alert for auroras on those days. Now, concerning the solar flares coming at us, the consequences could be far more serious than the appearance of the northern or the southern lights, which are so beautiful. For the most part, Earth's magnetic field protects us from barrage of radiation, but solar storms can affect satellite-based technology, as we know, 
and solar winds can heat the Earth's outer atmosphere, causing it to expand. And this can affect satellites in orbit, potentially leading to a lack of GPS navigation or mobile phones, glitches in our uh, internet, etc., signal and satellite TV. Additionally, a surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can lead to higher than normal electricity in the power lines, resulting in electrical transformers at power stations, blowouts, and a loss of power. The higher amounts of radiation can also leave people vulnerable to cancer. Also, we have a list of, uh, on space weather, the list of near-Earth asteroids. As we know, we had three of them come in, uh, almost skimming Earth. One of them came in along uh, from southwest to northeast over the Canadian border towards uh, flying over basically Lake Erie and it ended up somewhere in Ontario and that was totally unexpected nobody even saw that coming now July 27 there were 1983 potentially hazardous asteroids a lot of them have been discovered this year 2019 now the next one coming at us would be today, July 27th, velocity of 3.7 kilometers per second, that's a diameter of 14 meters. After that we have one coming in, 26 meters diameter on the 29th, and we have one more in August. These are the ones that we know of, 1,983. Also, we have to be aware that when we're flying, we are exposed to radiation. The higher we fly and the longer we fly, the more radiation we get hit with. According to the space weather balloon data, which goes up approximately once a week, the students of Earth to Sky Calculus fly space, space weather balloons to the stratosphere over California, and these balloons are equipped with radiation centers that detect cosmic rays, a surprisingly down-to-earth form of space weather. Cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger lightning, and penetrate commercial airplanes as well. Furthermore, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death in the general population. Our latest measurements show that cosmic rays are intensifying with an increase of more than 18% since 2015. Now there's a graph here that says that stratospheric radiation has increased 18% from 2000, December 2014 to uh, December 2018, that's five years. And uh, that's just about 4% a year, uh, over 3% a year. It's four, let's see, it's 4% a year. So it's uh, 18 plus 4. We, we've, already have, we've already had an, a decrease of our magnetosphere about 25%. There's an increase in radiation because of the fact that we have a decrease in our magnetosphere. The data points to the graph corresponding to the Renegar Fotzer maximum, which lies about 67,000 feet above central California. When cosmic rays crash into Earth's atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that is most intense at the entrance to the stratosphere. Physicists Eric Renegar and George Fotzer discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s. And this is what we're using to measure this today. Now, what are causing cosmic rays to intensify? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds, such as the coronal mass ejections, the CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass Earth. But during solar, min that, uh, during solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But now, that our solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return because the CMEs are very minimal. And that's another reason 
uh, that it could, it could be the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.